Uh, the last one, um, this gentleman followed uh, Jello Biafra <laughs> and made a statement about how he didn't exactly agree with the uh, politics of Mr. Biafra, but that's what these conferences are about, sharing information and uh, differing opinions. Um, Steve Rombaum is going to discuss privacy, how it's dead, get over it. It's true that, uh, is this working? Okay, let's try this. It, it's true that during H2K, I had a uh, rather strong difference of opinion with uh, Jello Biafra. Uh, unfortunately, during the past two years, I have been uh, driven a lot, at, well, kicking and screaming a lot closer to his position. In the past two years, we've seen in this country an enormous erosion of personal privacy, personal liberty, personal rights, and especially right to privacy. It has always been considered in this country to be a basic human right, the right to privacy, the right to be left alone, as it was once described by the Supreme Court. That right and the ability to keep your affairs private, even your most intimate affairs private, has now been completely eliminated. There has been a lot of debate over the past two years about the Patriot Act, about total information awareness, terrorist information, action network, uh, the DARPA activities. What I hope to do today is to give you enough information, more than enough information, regarding just what's available out there on each individual person and to help you make an informed decision about the Patriot Act, about DARPA's projects, about, frankly, the upcoming election. Wozniak gave me the best segue that he possibly could when he started talking about what was fundamentally American. In this country, there's always been a level playing field, or in theory a level playing field, between the government and the private citizen. Supposedly the government was not entitled to anything that you weren't entitled to. Information was supposed to be free. If there was a property record, you were entitled to that record. If there was a voter registration, you were entitled to see that voter registration. If someone compiled a file on you, you were entitled to see that file, if for no other reason than to correct the errors in it. What has happened over the past two years, like never before in the history of the United States, is that your most intimate secrets, your most confidential information, has been cataloged, cross-referenced, data mined, compiled, conglomerated, and made available to the U.S. government by private industry. And because it's been made available by private industry, law and regulation doesn't control it. You have no right to look at it. Freedom of Information Act doesn't cover it. Now, there are very, very good reasons for information to be out there and to be available. If you're hiring a nanny, you should be able to determine if this nanny was a child molester or charged with assault. If you have a housekeeper, you have a right to know if this person's been arrested for burglary. If there's a school bus driver, you really have a right to know if that person has a drunk driving conviction before he drives your kid. If you hire an employee, it's probably useful to know if this person's ever been involved in an act of workplace violence. If you lend somebody money, you should know what their, their credit rating is. All of these things make sense. They especially make sense when you talk about public figures. You have a right to know what John Kerry's military record is. You have a right to know what George Bush and 
and Cheney's financial dealings were. Information should be available to everyone equally. That's, that's basic American philosophy. What I'm going to do over the next half hour or less is give you the Reader's Digest version of databases, privacy, what's available out there. I'm then going to take one or two victims from the audience, one or two volunteers from the audience, and I'm going to... Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, unfortunately, I've just been handed a social security number. Unfortunately, when we get to that, the person whose social security number this is is going to have to stand up and volunteer. I'm not going to just randomly run an SSN. This is probably Jack Valenti's social security number. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm not so stupid. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the Reader's Digest survey of what's out there. I'm then going to demonstrate what's out there rather graphically by logging on to what's called a, a personal reference database and running a couple of people here. And then we're going to do questions and answers because, frankly, your questions usually elicit better information than I would ever think to speak about on my own. Um, I'm going to start by start this presentation by picking first on Democrats, then on Republicans. So don't pick an inopportune moment to boo. I'm sure all of you have gone out and seen Fahrenheit 9-11. I was asked by a buddy of mine to take a look into Michael Moore's background. Out of curiosity, the first thing you do when you investigate someone is you do what's called developing identifiers, which, even though I don't have much regard for Mr. Moore, I do have regard for his privacy, so I've redacted his social security number and address and anything remotely personal. And, and by the way, you could go down to the local voter registration office here in Manhattan and get all the information that I redacted. I just chose not to be the one to give it to you. When I investigated Michael Moore, I thought that I was going to find a ton of records in Michigan. Flint, Michigan, you know, all the various places where his origins supposedly are. In fact, I found out that Michael Moore, for the past 10 years, has been a New Yorker. And before that, he was in DC. I also found out, now I assume, or at least I hope that everyone in this room who's over the age of 18 is a registered voter. And I'm sure you all know that you can only be a registered voter in one place, unless you're Michael Moore. Michael Moore, by the way, Michael Moore when he was taken to task by the press about being a shill for the Democrats, he said, I'm an independent voter, not a registered Democrat, according to the Associated Press. Not true, Michael. This is his current New York State voter registration here in Manhattan. He is active. He is a Democrat. He is also active in Michigan. Uh, now, you might wonder why that is. Any basic investigation, by the way, involves the internet simply because it's huge and it's free. So I went to michaelmoore.com and I saw a quote where he urges everyone, he highlights uh, 17 swing states, 17 heavily contested states, and he says, if you live in a place like New York, you gotta head over to a place like New Mexico and register to vote there and, in theory, influence the election. So I guess that's what Michael Moore did. He ran back to Michigan, which he shows is a contested state. New York, as we all know, is not a contested state. Adolf Hitler could run on the Democratic Party line and he'd be elected. <laughs> I've now picked on the Democrats. Let me pick on the Republicans. And as a guy who voted for Bush last time, I'm sorry to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Ask me what I'm going to do this time. <laughs> I'm sorry to say that malfeasance on the part of Republicans is a lot scarier. Let me see if you can follow this. I tried to have my office lay this out in a fairly coherent format. And if you don't follow this, let me know and I will go back. This is important and this is true. In the 1980s, there was a drug smuggler who we're going to call H. Any of you doing the most basic internet research can get H's name. H was a pilot flew lots and lots and lots of coke from the Bahamas into the U.S. Got grabbed by the feds. He agreed to be an informant, and I'm quoting, in drug trials from Gainesville to Chicago. Lots and lots and lots of drug trials. H has no criminal record as far as I can tell. H also is not a bad hacker, a real hacker. Not a cracker, but a hacker in the traditional sense and a fantastic programmer, I'm told. And he starts a company called Database Technologies. Database Technologies, DBT, was one of the best in its time and one of the first database services with information on people made available to collection agencies and PIs and law enforcement, everything from driving records to motor vehicles, social security records, what have you. H manages to get, through his personal friendship with the head of the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, which is the Florida State Cops, he gets a huge contract with the FDLE. The head of the FDLE, Tim Moore, who just retired in part because of his friendship with this guy, introduces H to Jeb Bush, who, as we all know, is the president's brother. DBT is hired by the state of Florida in 1998 and 1999 to do what's called cleansing voter rolls. Florida is one of the states where if you're a convicted felon, you're disenfranchised. You don't have the right to vote. DBT, through matching, incredibly inaccurate matching, of criminal records to voter registration rolls, causes 120,000 people in Florida to be yanked from voter registration. Anybody, tell me who you think these voters were. Minorities, overwhelmingly Democratic. Next person, tell me by how many votes George Bush won the state of Florida. Uh, 627, but you're close. The NAACP sued DBT. DBT later got bought up by a good company called Choice Point, and Choice Point settled with the NAACP. As part of the settlement, they admitted to 8,000 voters being improperly disenfranchised. In fact, in one county alone, it was 6,627, which cosmically is 6,000 exactly more than Bush won by. Among the people incorrectly disenfranchised were the head of the voter registration office, to give you an idea of, of how screwed up the data processing was. I don't think you have to be a rocket scientist to follow this. Guy gets introduced to Jeb Bush. Guy gets hired by the state of Florida. Guy yanks off Democrats. State of Florida decides the election. This guy basically decides who votes in the election. Now, I, I'm not a conspiracy nut. I'm not one of these people who believe that we didn't really land on the moon. It was a sound stage in Nevada and all of these various wild-eyed theories. This I know is true. No, no, no ranting from the audience. There'll be a ranting period. It gets worse. Around the same time that H is doing all this cleansing, he forms a company called Sisent. 
Has anybody here heard of SISA? Not a single hand is going up, which is terrifying. Oh, one hand went up. No, it's a hand holding a camera. No, no hand has gone up. Sisent is the company that has provided the database that goes into total information awareness. Sisent is the company that formed the matrix database, which we'll go into. Sisent is the number one compiler of the data that's going into all the Patriot Act databases. You guys have never heard of Sisent. Write down the name, go to the internet, look it up, do your research. You'll be astounded you've never heard of them. Uh, I would urge you to read it off the screen. Really? Uh, S-E-I-S-I-N-T. Sorry about that. I can see it from here. <laughs> Immediately after 9-11, Sisent puts together a database called HTF, which stands for High Terrorist Factor. I, I know it sounds like something out of Monty Python, but it's not. It's something very, very frightening. Sisent, meaning H, claims that they took a terrorist manual, used that manual to determine terrorist behavioral characteristics. I mean, other than blowing things up, there's no terrorist behavioral characteristic. They develop an algorithm, and they use that algorithm to search all of their billions of records. And they come up with a database of 120,000 Americans. They turn this database over to everybody that they can. Every governmental agency, which at that point is terrified to miss any lead, they don't want to claim they didn't act on a tip. Every governmental agency runs that data. Everybody in that database is subjected essentially to a governmental proctology exam. Not one single person in that database is actually ever arrested and charged with a terrorist act. Nevertheless, Sison gets $12 million from Jeb Bush's brother's government to form a database called MATRIX, which stands for Multi-State Anti-Terrorism Information Exchange. What this is, is they managed to get 16 states to go along with this. Every driver's license, every motor vehicle, every criminal record, every voter registration record, phone records, banking records, business licenses, gun licenses, small claims court filings, UCC filings, corporate filings. I could stand here for about 20 minutes and list the stuff that the states were required to turn over to Sisent, a private company that you and I have no right to look at their activities. Sisent then takes 16 states' worth of confidential data, merges it with all the private database stuff, which I'm going to show you in a second, and creates this matrix database. This is Big Brother on steroids to the max. You guys have never heard of this. You've never heard of Sison. Has anyone here ever heard of Matrix? Um, about 10% of the room is raising their hands, which, by the way, is 9% more than the average audience that I speak to. Still not good enough. Matrix turns out to be such a bomb and so useless that nine out of the original 16 states pull out. Utah's attorney general issues a press release saying that it's significantly flawed and a danger to civil liberties. Now, mind you, Utah is the Mormons. You cannot get more conservative than Utah. And Utah says Matrix sucks. The objection to Matrix is so huge, and the fallout is so enormous, that Congress, who thank God you and I still vote for, defunds all of these database efforts. Here's where it gets really, really scary, boys and girls. DARPA, which in general is our friend, it started the internet, it does a lot of genuinely useful things. DARPA went into what's called a black budget. Black budget means it is not reviewable, 
It's basically a huge chunk of money that shows up in their budget, and next to it it says, we're not telling you what we're doing with this money. Thank you very much. They took a huge chunk of this, $12.1 million, and they used it to fund something called TIA, Total, uh, well, now it's called Terrorist Information Awareness, which is the most cynical, obnoxious name I've ever heard of because the Terrorist Information Awareness Network was defunded. I guess they had a bunch of polo shirts with TIA on them and they didn't want to have to buy new polo shirts so they kept the initials. DARPA turned around and funded Sison, funded a bunch of other companies. You know there's a guy here who's just taken off his clothes in the front row? This is amazing. I, I will say, sir, I hope you're in the database. The scary thing is DARPA, which is subject to at least some kind of overview and some type of FOIA requests, and certainly a look-see by the Congress, has turned around and done nothing more than funded private industry. Private industry puts together these databases, and then government accesses these databases on a per search, beta, da, da, uh, per search basis. So for example, if what's your name since I'm going to be using you as a victim? Your first name? So let's say I am Homeland Security, which by the way, their privacy officer now is a former double-click executive. So that's actually true. That's honest to God true. Naira O'Connor, a double-click executive, is now the privacy officer for the Homeland Security Department. It boggles the mind. Let's say I want to investigate Ben. I don't really have the right necessarily to look up Ben's butt. But I go to Sisent. I log in. I go to a special portal that they've set up for governments performing proctology on citizens. I put in whatever I know about Ben, which is typically and, and easily obtained, by the way, as I'll show you, because Ben agrees to be a victim, right, Ben? A limited victim. OK. It will take me about two seconds to get Ben's date of birth, social security number, address. I take that. I plug it into the database. And I get back everything. Now, it's not. See, that's what happens when you don't use a Mac. Um, you know, if Wozniak was still up here, I could get him to hook up my Mac, but he's downstairs. I plug it in. I do an investigation of Ben, completely outside any warrant, any court order, any judge's permission. I have not accessed governmental records. I have access to private industry records, which Ben, by the way, cannot then go and review because they're private records. He would have to start a lawsuit against Sison and subpoena the records, which, by the way, Sison would then say they can't turn over because of the security restrictions on their government contract. Can't get it through FOIA, can't get it through the government, can't get it through private action. This is a loophole large enough to drive a truck through. So let's discuss what exactly goes into those databases. The databases, obviously, as you saw in Michael Moore, everywhere you live or have ever lived. I'm going to demonstrate a database for you in about 10 minutes that will show your address history for 30 years, assuming you've had addresses for 30 years. Everywhere you work or have ever worked, the name of your spouse, the name of your previous spouse, if you're an unlucky person, the name of your spouse before that, every name of your kids, you must have a social security number for your child at birth now. I won't get into a whole Mark of the Beast discussion, but it's certainly the Mark of the Database. Even if you're pregnant, 
it will be in there. Doctors sell names of pregnant people to marketing companies. Have you ever wondered, those of you that have had an impending child, how those diaper people know to send you solicitations? Now you know. Every friend that you have or have had for the past 10 years, who you email, who you talk to on the phone, who you go and visit, everyone you've ever lived with, all of these things go, you know, this friends and family thing on Sprint doesn't even scratch the surface. How you vote, voting records are public record. And even after a voter registration card is purged, there are dozens of companies that archive voter registration records, including mine, by the way. The most detailed information regarding your personal politics and beliefs, you know, it's so easy to extrapolate to who you are and what you believe on the basis of what you read, where you shop, who you vote for, what organizations you belong to. You know, if you used your credit card to contribute to the ACLU, you're probably not a member of the Ku Klux Klan. It, it, it is outrageously easy to deduce what your politics are just from databases. Your religion. I'm going to show you examples of marketing lists. There are specifically targeted Jewish lists, Catholic lists, Buddhist lists, Hindu lists. If you are an Orthodox Jew and you have flown on an airplane, you have ordered the kosher meal. That is in a database as an example of how unintended information pops out. I've used those databases. I can determine what your national origin is. Are you from Laos? Are you from India? And not just by your name, but by what you do and what you read and what your interests are in your daily life. Are you straight? Are you gay? Are you bisexual? Now I've added, are you a metrosexual? I, I only learned what that was about four months ago, but if I have your, your credit card bills, I can tell if you're a metrosexual. If you're a guy and you go for a facial every 10 days, you're a metrosexual. Your, your, your sexual habits, your likes, your dislikes, you know, I did an investigation of a guy once, and we pulled his credit card bills through subpoena, but we pulled them. And we found out that he purchased about $200 worth of videos from a company called Utopia Entertainment. So we went to their website, and we see they specialize in a thing called fighting females. It's women in bikinis wrestling. I mean, God bless you. I, 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 I really don't care what you're into. What I want to tell you is, whatever you're into, I can find out pretty easily. What you do on the internet, listen, cookies, web bots, hidden graphics, internet database mining, Google, things you know about that make Google look like nothing, things you don't know about that make Google look like nothing, Everyone's internet habits are out there. Uh, and, and, and for sale, by the way. And as I pointed out, Noyla O'Connor, who was a senior officer of DoubleClick, is now Department of Homeland Security's privacy officer. officer. TV and cable viewing habits. Nothing that you do, unless you have just a plain antenna connected to a TV, which I would say maybe 3% of the people in this room have that. Everyone else has cable, satellite, TiVo. If you have TiVo, have you ever seen the thing pop up that says suggested viewing, things you might like? Well, they know that because they index all of your viewing. If you have purchased pay-per-view football games for the past three games, they will recommend, they'll, they'll tell you right away, hey, you may want to buy this this upcoming game. Your medical condition and what medicines you take, not just through something called the MIB, the aptly named MIB, Medical Information Bureau, 
which indexes all of your medical history for the insurance industry, but because doctors and pharmacists sell your prescription information. Do you have high cholesterol? You're going to get an ad for cholesterol medicine, medicines. You have a new baby? You're going to get an ad for diapers, and so on and so on to the most privacy invading degree. What you eat, what you wear, what you drive, everywhere you visit, and by everywhere, I mean everywhere. Everything from easy pass to metro cards purchased with credit cards to frequent flyer lists to frequent hotel guests to your credit card bills to the GPS on your phone to RFID tags that are coming out in scary places. The government DARPA is now in developing something, and this was started by our buddy Admiral Poindexter. And this is actually what it's called, human ID at a distance. This is already being used in five cities. What it is is it's facial recognition technology, but it's also things like gait recognition. Each person walks differently. And they're developing things like zooming in on your face, checking your gait, high probability of identifying you. Within five years, this will be in every airport in the country. And there will be a camera when you walk through the walk-through metal detector. Not only will it check you for weapons, it will check to see if you're wanted by facial recognition. No kidding, five years maximum. I've seen prototypes. Your habits, your hobbies, marketing lists, as I'm going to show you, the pets you own, your toys, your personal toys. And by the way, a lot of that is your own fault. Every time you send in a warranty card, it goes into a database what you purchased. Every time you buy something on the internet, it goes into a database. Every time you buy something with a credit card, it goes into a database. At the bottom of this list, I have a note, one to two days for everything. I can take any person in this room and within 48 hours, have that information on that individual. Everything in that list. If it exists, I can have it, whether you want me to or not. Can I do it legally? Not so much. <laughs> can I? Yes, I can. Can the government? Much, much faster. Basic information, which you think would be intrusive enough, can be gotten in less than 30 minutes typically five minutes, which I'm going to demonstrate on Ben or whatever we're going to find out your real name is. <laughs> I can get your SSN, your date of birth, your criminal record, your financial history, all your lawsuits, bankruptcies, property ownership, auto ownership, driver's license, names of your relatives, names of your friends if you've lived with them, that's the easy one, business records, all types of personal licenses, corporate documents, UCCs, what you don't know is every time you take out a loan, even if you don't apply for credit, a UCC-1 form is filed, essentially registering this thing belongs to us until the person pays for it. Unfortunately, Kevin Mitnick is not in the room, or he could comment on this probably better than I could. In one, one to seven days, typically one day, but if you really have made an effort to maintain your privacy, might take as much as, as much as a week. I can get your photo, I can get your phone bills, and by phone bills I'm talking about LUDs, your local calls, your toll calls, your cell phone calls. I can get your credit card bills, I can get your military records, your banking info, the easiest of all, your net worth, your medical records, Every email, every web posting, every blog you've ever done or contributed to, everything. All of this stuff is out there. You know how easy it is to get it. You know what there is out there on you. Here's what, I want, what I'm trying to tell you. Every bit of information that is out there on you is now compiled, indexed, cross-referenced, 
what type of person you are is being predicted with a predictive database, which we'll go into in a second. Your privacy is gone. It is history. You will never get it back. What we now have to decide is who do you want keeping control of it? This is a partial list. By the way, since DARPA has your address, I thought I would put at the bottom of the screen Total Information Awareness's headquarters address. So if you want to write it down and go visit, knock on the door, ask them for your record, it is uh, 3625 Fairfax Drive in Arlington. Tell them Steve said hi. I want to talk to you about marketing. Your big fear should not be big brother. It should be private industry. It should be, let's, let's say, little cousin as opposed to big brother. For two reasons. Nobody compiles more information on you than private industry because it is worth money to them. And every bit of this information is now being made available to the government because it's worth even more money to them to sell it to the government. This is a typical marketing ad and we're going to go from here. This is an ad for something called the Consumer Passion Index. Every hobby, every like, every dislike, everything that somebody could possibly sell you is indexed. Do you have a dog? Do you have a cat? Do you have a horse? Do you like to play golf? Are you a hunter? Are you a purchaser of films of women in bikinis wrestling? It starts from the earliest age. Here they're advertising high school lists and college lists. I want to tell you that lists are compiled now on grade school kids in return for companies making free closed circuit TV ads available, computers available, including, I'm sorry to say, Apple does this. It's not only when you become an adult, when you turn 18, when you start to vote, when you enter college, when you apply for credit. These lists start as young as six years old, first grade. In California, there was a big hullabaloo because people were compiling lists of preschool kids so they could market to the kids. Now, I believe Michael Jackson buys these lists on a regular basis. <laughs> All right, sorry. The point is, it starts even before you're 18. Here's a more intrusive ad. Youth marketing is our business. And here's some of the lists. High school students, college-bound high school students, they know what college you're going to because the colleges sell your name, your date of birth, and your social security number. That's why when you go to college, pretty much the day you get your acceptance, you also get an ad for a visa card, an app for a visa card. Every college without exception, there is no college in the United States that does not sell your information. It's worth money to them. Teenage lifestyle interests. I, I mean, I don't know what anybody could have marketed to me when I was 15, but apparently teenagers are much more sophisticated these days. Your parents, young professionals, ethnic families. Are you a Buddhist Indian teenager? Somebody knows the answer to that. There is specialized niche marketing to ethnic and religious groups. I'm going to show you some lists in a second you would not believe. It is so finely defined. Now, by the way, this is a double-edged sword. Let's say I'm David Duke and I have rental property and I want to be sure that I'm not renting to a black person or to a Jew. I can determine if you're black or Jewish with a tap, tap, tap of a keyboard. No problem. Marketing targeted at young Hispanics. More Hispanic marketing. 
ethnic teams. Here we have all of the potential privacy invasions rolled together. Here we have special marketing to foreign-born foreign -born Americans. The majority of American Asians are foreign-born. If I want to know if you are from Japan, China, Laos, Cambodia, what have you, I can find out for $120, which is going to be the basic cost of the marketing list that's talking about. There's a company called Allied Media Corp that specializes in these lists, ethnic business lists. And I don't know, is this even, re is this reasonably clear? Well, I'll, I'll read you a few. African American business owners, Arab American business owners, ooh, that's a good list to want to sell. Hispanic donors, Irish Americans, Japanese Americans, Koreans. Number two is religious affiliations, Catholic professionals. Jewish Americans, Jewish households, Muslim wealthy, Protestant wealthy. Then they have something cynically called general ethnic lists, which African American, Arab, Asian, Catholic, Cuban, Hispanic, Irish, Japanese, more Jews, more Koreans, Puerto Ricans, first Puerto Rican list I've seen, Russians. Then they have specialty lists, singles, baby boom, credit seekers, frequent flyers, Hispanic PC users, tech savvy individuals, wealthy retirees, that's a good list for kidnappers. Then they have animal welfare donors, golf enthusiasts, magazine subscribers, and I want to tell you the magazine subscriber lists that I've seen are scary. Not just Time and Newsweek, but everything from American Rifleman to Soldier of Fortune, to if you get AARP, to if, from a magazine, look, you are what you read, let's face it. There are books that if you are a right winger, you will not buy. If you are a left winger, you will not buy. I can tell who you are, what you believe, what you're interested in, what you care about on a daily basis by what you read. Two things will tell me almost anything I want to know about you. Your video rentals, and your book and magazine purchases. And those are for sale, for pretty cheap. Here's an example of some magazines, Child Magazine, Family Circle, Inc., Trademark, Computer Master File, Men's Health, Fortune, Style, Money, People, Sports Illustrated, Time, uh, it's, it's a big list. Field and stream. Do you own a pet? I can even tell that. Here's a list of pet owners, including what they call motivated pet owners, which I assume means that you contribute to animal rights. There are some truly bizarre and esoteric lists. I have no idea why they have them, but there's got to be a reason. Nurses at home. Child passenger safety technicians, workplace women. Now they have a thing called fan lists, Cad Fancier, Bird Talk magazine, Horse magazine, any pet that you own they're gonna have. There are lists that go to the trouble of invading the privacy for you so you can buy it all at once. Here are lists that will tell if the person has kids, how old they are, what their income is, their occupation, what they purchase through mail order, mail order, whether they have a home, whether they have a, m a mortgage, and something called modeling and analytics. For those of you who don't know about the marketing industry, let me tell you, the holy grail of the marketing industry is pretty much the holy grail, the same as the holy grail of the US government's TIA. They want to predict through databases, who you are and what you believe, so they can sell stuff to you. There's a famous study that found out if you buy chunky peanut butter and you, owned a ca and you own a cat, you are 70% more likely to, bu to buy a Volkswagen Beetle. I'll tell you that again. You buy chunky peanut butter, you own a cat, you're going to get a sales pitch for a Volkswagen Beetle. How they determine that, I don't know. 
But this is the sort of thing they determine, and it scares the bejesus out of me. I just put this in here because I want you to see how prevalent everywhere you turn it is gathering data on you. You go into a bar, they take your driver's license, they swipe it. What you don't know is it gets sucked into a database that the bar keeps, compiles, and sells. Everything on the barcode or in the OCR or on the front of your driver's license gets sucked into this database. And here's one of the things that does it. Name, date of birth, DL number, address, how long you've had the driver's license, when it expires, your previous state of issue, so on and so on and so on. God, what is this thing doing? I hate Windows. I can buy a list that'll tell me if you're a homosexual. Now, I mentioned this last time. Everybody, oh, come on, you're exaggerating. Gay marketing lists are the hottest lists. And I'll tell you why. Professional people, two incomes in the house, no screaming children that they got to spend money on. No joke. Two people, a lot of money, spending the money, living well. A marketer's dream. Gay lists are the big lists. And I can find out with a real high degree of certainty if you're heterosexual, if you're bisexual, if you're homosexual, if you're lesbian, and as I said as a joke, but it's true, if you're metrosexual. Here's just one list. You would think if you own a gun would be something that would be secret. Not really. Every gun owner's name is for sale, which makes sense if you're from Smith & Wesson and you want to market. By the way, I did an investigation last year on behalf of a media organization, and we found out that the president of Smith & Wesson was a convicted felon who wasn't allowed to own a firearm. <laughs> That's true. So, like I said, public records, double-edged sword, and God bless America. Here's an example of what I was talking about at relational databases. There's my chunky peanut butter and cat story. Another one that caught my eye. Reuters out of Berlin. Don't trust a man with a fast car. Porsche drivers are less faithful than any other group of car owners, with almost 50% of them cheating on their partners. Probably four or five people in here are writing that down. Marketing cars, cars are a big ticket item. Every car that gets sold makes somebody tens of thousands of dollars. Car owners primarily, car manufacturers primarily through a company called RL Polk dissect their customer database to a degree that makes total information awareness look like amateurs. Here's just the basic stuff. Chrysler 300, good car by the way. Average drivers, male, 53, married, interested in golf, current affairs, politics, and travel. Usual buyers in Indianapolis, Cleveland, Toledo, and Omaha. Now, whoever you are, please be quiet. Um, by the way, I can find out who you are. Now that I've scared everyone here, let me focus the, I hope, or interested you at any rate, let me focus the issue as finely as possible. The issue is all of this information that the government is gathering on us, all of this constant governmental proctology, is there any use to it? Does it serve our purposes? I'm an American, I'm Jewish, I know people who've died in terrorist acts. Personally, the most basic level of my DNA says, if this stuff will really prevent terrorism, all right, let them screw us a little bit. That's the issue. Does this stuff do anything, or do we get all the harm and none of the benefit? And the answer is, yeah, we get all the harm and none of the benefit. None of this stops people who steal someone's identity. None of this 
stops people from coming in from overseas with false identification. None of this stops people who just go to the motor vehicle bureaus in 30 states or in anywhere in Canada and say, hello, I'm Ahmed, give me a driver's license, and excuse the ethnic slur, but I wanted to get your attention. Or Ahmed says, I'm Steve Rambam, give me a driver's license. This is a recent USA Today article. Driver license fraud still too easy. I want to tell you, within the past 90 days, I went into the Motor Vehicle Department, the Department of Public Safety in Louisiana, and as part of a test, an internal test, I got two driver's licenses in different names, no problem. You know how at the airport, show me your ID. They don't swipe it, they don't check it, they don't have access to the files, they don't have a reader that they can put it through and see if it was made in the local 7-Eleven. Just show it to me. Okay, yeah, looks like you. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Otta. Enjoy your flight. <laughs> New York Times article. Fake licenses are seen as still easy to obtain. Here's a guy, I forget, Maryland or Virginia, who went out and got 12 licenses. You know, it's always nice to have a hobby. <laughs> I'm speaking from experience. I have, I don't, I don't just, you know, the, the, the hair club for men commercial, I don't just, I'm not the, just the spokesman, I'm also a customer. I don't just dress like a fed. I actually once worked with them. <laughs> and by the way, the, the, the downside to having spoken at every single, one more minute, I need about 10. Can I have 10? Can I have 10 minutes? Okay. I'm going to, no, 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 no. Just give me three minutes. I'm going to go through this like a speed freak, and then I'm going to take like four or five questions. The downside to having spoken at every HOPE convention is I don't get picked anymore in the Spot the Fed contest. And believe me, I try. I'm even wearing my Secret Service cufflinks today. But it doesn't work. You all know me. Fortunately, people at Department of Motor Vehicles don't know me, so when I need false identities for stings, no problem. Here's my California driver's license as David Matute. Here's my California driver's license as Salvatore Romano. Here's my California driver's license as David Halkin. Very quickly, I once had to go out and do an undercover sting against Nazi war criminals. I, re I couldn't go into their homes and say, hi, I'm Steve Rombaum, I'm a Jewish guy from Brooklyn. Tell me about your, your war crimes. So what I did was, and by the way, very quickly, here's my Hong Kong driver's license under the name of Stephen Paul, which is still current. Here's my Honduran driver's license under the name of Stephen Paul. What I did when I did this undercover sting was I f went down to Belize, went to a guy I knew there, David, and I said, David, listen, I need a university. And he says, oh, should it be accredited? I said, no, no, just give me, just give me a university. We formed St. Paul's University of the Americas, of which I was of course, the faculty, the student body, and the alumni association. And I went around to the war criminals, supposedly interviewing them for my doctoral thesis. So here's my university ID. Here's my passport. No joke. Just to make sure if anybody checked me out, I have multiple phone lines in my office. And I have a Dun & Brad account. So I called Dun & Brad from one phone line. And I said, I'd like to get a credit report on St. Paul's University of the Americas. We're about to do business with them. Here's their phone number. Next day, Dunn and Brad called the other number. Oh, yes, this is St. Paul's University of the Americas. Oh, yes, uh, we do a million dollars a year. We're alumni, blah, blah, blah. That's our Dunn and Brad report. Don't trust Dunn and Brad. <laughs> now, I don't want you to think only Steve Rombaum, sneaky investigator, government connections can do this. Here is our president's daughter's fake ID, which, which is one of the two used by Barbara and Jenna Bush to go out and do underage drinking. Or, or, or as, they're known, as they're known by their Secret Service code names, Bud and Bud Light. <laughs> um, you want a passport? Not a problem. Go to the Herald Tribune, there's ads. These are legit ads. Second passports, EU passports. Okay, I, I'm, I'm 
getting the bums rush here in terms of time. I can't do the demonstration from here. Okay, shh, 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 shh. I'll do it later. This guy here with the hat and the hair, grab him by the scruff of the neck, make him give me a place with an internet connection, and I'll sit down with everybody unlimited time and, 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 and do this for you. Uh, how many questions can I take? Okay, either five intelligent ones or three stupid ones. Uh, that's what that sign means, right? I, I, okay, the time. Kismet guy is my hero. He said so I can have like to, five more minutes yeah, just, of his like, time. Like ten more minutes. Ten more minutes? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so seven intelligent questions or five stupid ones. Okay. Go ahead, guys. Not the guy who took off his shirt. You've got to come to me later. I don't trust you. No, no, I'll, I'll call it. Is, it. is there anything? Okay, demo. All right, you, Ben, come here at the speed of light, please. Okay, somebody who's willing to give up a social security number. You, really? <laughs> now, by the way, guys, I would hope professional courtesy, you won't try to screw with the system, but just in case you do, I have a test account set up, which disconnects in about an hour. So. Please don't mess with me. And if Kevin Mitnick is here, close your eyes. Uh, does the test account work? Yes, it does. Okay. Uh, who, what, you? Let me see your ID. I'm not going to take your info until I make sure it's really you. <laughs> give me your ex. Give me, give me two pieces of ID. Any one piece of ID. I have the database. Oh my God, are you in trouble? Okay, here's the problem. He has two pieces of ID, and they're two driver's licenses. <laughs> See, he's my hero. Okay. You're going to give me your SSN, right? <laughs> I wouldn't do it. What's your SSN? <laughs> yeah, tell me. It's going to go up on the screen, pal. 112. 112. 70. 70. 06. 06. 44. 44. Okay. We, we. <laughs> what is go? I hate Windows, man. Okay, fraud prevention. This is a guy who has two driver's licenses. Let's see what it says about you. Oh my God, you are David Richards, and you do live, in fact, at 83 Fairview Avenue. Before that, you lived at Fairmount Avenue. Before that, you lived in Rhode Island. Before that, you lived in the Bronx. Before that, you lived in Yonkers. By the way, you'll notice that took about three seconds. Before that, you lived in Jersey City. Uh, what I want to know is why you have two dates of birth, one of which is 1925. That's a mistake, and uh, they, have, they never corrected Yeah, I wonder who put that in there. <laughs> Trying to get those AARP discounts. <laughs> Jersey City, Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, you're also known as Beseda Martinez? No. Yes, you are, pal. <laughs> uh, Okay, seriously, somebody may be monkeying with your SSN. What you do is you got to write all three bureaus asking for copies of their credit reports. Okay. I, I'm not kidding. Okay. No, no, it, this is extremely not funny. David Richards, okay, all the way back to the Bronx. Now, let's say, God, I, would you cut this out? How do you get this thing to go back? Yeah, I know, and I'm clicking on the correct one. Yeah, I know it's right, and it's not going back. They reverse the buttons? What is this? Let's, let's harass the PI day? Okay, you know what? I'm going to have to use hyperlinks. All right.
Let me tell you. Oh, come on. All right, great. I forgot to authorize myself for this database. That was smart. Let me tell you that every telephone number on the planet, published, non-published, cell phone, is in somebody's database. Don't go away. We like you. Richards, right? R-I-C-H-A-R-D-S. David. Where, where is your phone installed? I could find this myself, but we're in a rush. Uh, what, what, what is the billing address for the phone? Yonkers. <laughs> Yonkers, come on, yes, I, no, no, New York, I know. Ah! You know, Wozniak, where are you when I need you? Is it a listed number or non-pub? I think it's unlisted. You think it's unlisted. What's your address in Yonkers? 23 Felton. Uh, it's not in Yonkers because this defaulted to Larchmont and Harrison. Uh, this is Jersey. You don't know where your phone number is? No, I know it. That's cell phone. No, no, not the cell. Oh, here, I'm sorry. I take it back. Here you go. Is that you? Yeah, no, okay. It. Yeah, we won't show that. Uh, here's all the businesses cross-referenced with your name. I don't know if you own any of them. If I'm you own the... DDS Consulting. Let's see. Company. Bunch of companies. Archive the phones. Re registered under Jersey. Okay. Let's go back to the main menu. I just want to run. What I'm going to do very quickly is I'm going to run your phone number. So God. Which one? Any well, any phone number you want, but preferably not a cell because I'm in a rush. Why does this want to send email? Hold on. Give me your. I'm